Hello and welcome to this demonstration, Administering PDB as a Service, Serve Service Portal. We show you how to create a database pool for PDBs, as well as corresponding profiles and templates for later deployments by self-service users. First of all, let's connect to Enterprise Manager as a cloud administrator. Before we define the database pool serve service users will use to request PDBs from, we are going to look at the set of servers we will use to host CDBs. This set is called a zone. One is already created and we will use it. But let's have a quick look at how it was defined. As you can see, the zone is called bronze. In reference to the Oracle Database 12C MAA Best Practice Service Level Tiers for Database as a Service. This pool contains servers hosting single instance CDBs. A development or test type of placement policy is defined for maximum CPU and memory allocation. This allows to filter out outburned servers when deploying to this pool. Two servers are part of our bronze zone and a name credential was created to access those servers. One role was pre-created and assigned to this zone to allow access of its servers to self service portal users. We can now cancel this operation and confirm. Next step is to define the database pool containing CDBs used for future PDBs deployments. You can do so from the database cloud administration portal. The database pool we want to create will be a set of CDB instances running on host within the defined bronze zone and used for PDB provisioning. So let's give it a name, then a description, and then let's select a pre-created credential, so for the host. We don't need one for the grid infrastructure, as this is single instance, and one for the database, which has been pre-created. Then we need to define the zone, so select bronze here. Then let's select the platform, Linux uh, x8664, and then the target type which uh, is going to be database instances and the version 12.101 in this case. Now we need to add CDBs that will be used for provisioning on uh, both hosts and you can see that uh, we have two, one on each host, so let's select them and they're going to be used to provision our PDBs. And that's basically it, so click Next. So you cannot define placement policies allowing you to set maximum ceilings for resource utilization. So for the PDBs, uh, let's not exceed 50 in this case. And for workloads, uh, let's specify 90% um, for the CPU and 90% for the maximum memory utilization. Resource manager will be used for the CPU uh, management. And you are ready to create your uh, pool. Click Submit. Now the pool is creating and uh, this is done. So we now need to look at the request settings. And here we're gonna leave all the defaults in place. So for the future request uh, scheduling period, uh, no constraints, default retention and uh, purging duration. So you can click apply. You can now define quotas for your roles. Here we already assign quota values to the SSA underscore user role. The specified numbers represent the aggregated amount of corresponding resources one user can occupy at a time. Time to create profiles and templates. A profile is basically the source data of your future database deployments. Here, 
two profiles are already created and we are going to see how to create one you could use for a non-CDB to PDB migration scenario. You now need to define the reference target. So here we have different types, but it's going to be a database instance and it's a ref DB in our case. So you select that one as your reference target. And then what you do is that you want to create an export of that database. You need to define uh, the credentials, so for the host itself, and then for the database. So for both of them, we are going to use the predefined name credentials. And then you can click Next. You now need to define the export type you want to do, which is going to be a full database export. Then add the directory location for your dump file. So we're going to choose the data pump dir directory. So we select it. Then you can constrain the maximum file size for the dump file, 700, let's say, megabyte. And you can choose the log directory. So we keep data pump dir in this case. And then you can click next. Next step is to define the profile information, like its location inside the software library, a name and a description, as well as the database version in this case. Here we can safely use the proposed default values. Click Next. You can now review your profile and click Submit to create it. But here we won't do that because we already have one created, so we're going to cancel this operation. You now need to create the template, which is the object uh, provided to the self-service user to provision your PDB. So you create one for pluggable databases. You give it a name, then a description, and a profile. A profile that you already defined for your pluggable databases. There is only one right now, so you can uh, select it from the drop-down list here. Then you need to add zones and pools. So select the zone. There is only one that we are going to use. If you remember, this is for single instance PDB provisioning containing two servers and then associated to the pool of database instance, the CDB instances that were created. So there is only one right now, one pool. So you select it. Then you need to specify the share location. This is where you're going to put the dump files uh, from your export. This is a directory uh, created on all the nodes. So here it's going to be scratch PDB dumps. Last thing you need to specify is the pluggable database prefix. And then you can click Next. You need to create a template configurations uh, which represent the expected CPU memory and storage requirements for each of your templates. So we are going to create uh, one which we call Tini and for which we're going to specify values for CPU memory sessions and storage. So these are relatively uh, small. Then let's create another one that we call small with uh, slightly bigger values in this case for the workload. Let's click create. Next, we need to uh, set the default workload. So it's going to be teeny in this case. And next step is to define a, a role for your pluggable database administrators. So we're going to create a new one. And as you can see, we have a number of privileges that are automatically ground through that role to your administrator. Click Next. You can now change some of the initialization parameter values. We won't do that here, so you can safely click Next in this case. Then you can run scripts before and after creating your database or when you delete it. We won't do that here, so you can also click Next. Then you can assign roles to your templates so that they can be used by the self-service uh, users. So here we're going to uh, make sure that uh, 
the SSA underscore user role is selected. Then you can click next and review uh, your template information and then click create and the template is uh, created right now. So you are now in a position where we can switch to the self-service user to request these templates. So you can log out in this case, then connect back as a self-service user. In, the, in this case, it's going to be John Smith. From a John Smith database portal, you can now create requests to deploy pluggable databases. So let's create one and uh, you need to select the template. So this is the template we just created to clone RefDB. So we select this one. Then we need to specify a name for the request. So John Smith one here and a service name to access the PDB. So my ref PDB here. And then you need to uh, specify an administrator uh, that will be given the special privileges you ask for your template. Then you can create submit and your request is now running. You refresh it multiple times uh, until it is uh, succeeded. So now in progress and now success. So you can verify what was going on for this request. So you have a list of all the execution steps here, including the create pluggable database. And now what you can do is go back to um, the administration pages as uh, user sysman, for example, to look at the created PDB. So to make sure that it was deployed. So from the summary page, you select the targets. So you look at your databases. And then you can see that you have MyCDB1 containing pluggable databases and one that was just created, RevDB00. So that's basically it. So you see end-to-end -end how to deploy this PDB. So thank you very much for watching.